welcome if you're watching us online. It's great to have you with us this morning. And uh, for those of you that are here with us today, we're so grateful and thankful that you're here. I want to welcome any new people that may be here today. So if you're new here today, thanks for being here. It's great to have you. And we hope you enjoy the service. We're doing a sermon series right now on what it means to be more for Jesus. And what it means to serve God and to love God and to be the person that God wants you to be. And this morning we're talking about the O in more, which is the word optimize. Now, I, I chose the word optimize for a specific reason. I don't know if you've ever had a computer or not. Anybody here have a computer? S something called system optimization. And I looked up what system opti optimization means. It means to get rid of any errors. That's not optimal. If, you're, if your system is running slow, to make sure it's running at perfect speed, making sure there's no problems that are going to cause your system to not be able to work at its best. And I don't know about you, and I don't know about where you're coming from, I don't know where you're at in life, but for me, no matter what age or what stage of life I'm in, I want to try to do my best at that age and that stage. I, I don't... I don't know how old your hard drive is today. I know some of our hard drives are getting pretty full. <laughs> Not running as quick as they used to. Might be a time to delete a few programs. I don't know what you're up to. But I want to talk to you this morning about how to live before Jesus, how to live before God, and use all of the gifts and abilities God has given you to his glory. To live in such a way that you can find his blessing over your life. And, and a lot of it has to do with what... I'm going to talk to you about here for a few minutes. And that is your aspect and your attitude towards life and towards who you are, more importantly, as a person. And in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, if you have your Bibles and you want to look along with us online, I'd like to talk to you for a few moments about how to get your life from good or better to best. To not live your life kind of mediocre, but to live in such a way that you can live your very best. And there's a very important couple verses here that talk to us about how to do that. And here are those verses from Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Now, let's unpack that for a few minutes. And let's talk about what that means. So the first part of this is to let nothing be done through selfish ambition. Now, notice it doesn't say let nothing be done through ambition. Ambition is a good thing. Some of you in here are contractors, and some of you in here are builders, and some of you in here refuse to do anything halfway. You'd rather tear the house down than build a crooked wall. <laughs> now that's ambitious. The earth is round. <laughs> Nothing wants to go straight. <laughs> Everything wants to be crooked. <laughs> but if you're ambitious enough, you can actually build a relatively straight wall from your perspective. <laughs> you can actually do something well that looks right, that's going to last for a long time. Some of you are ambitious to be parents this morning. That's ambitious. To bring a baby into this world and to raise a child, <laughs> that takes a lot of work. Some of you have ambitions to start a company, become self-employed, be your own boss. Did you know sometimes that's the worst boss you'll ever have? <laughs> you. <laughs> Some of you have ambitions to put away enough so you can have a little bit of re retirement money left over when you, when you, you know, live into your retirement. Some of you have worked all your lives to put a certain amount away so that you're prepared for 
uh, that part of your life, that season of your life. Ambition in and of itself is not a bad thing. I think God wants us to be ambitious. I think God wants us to reach for the stars. That's why I talked about last week about Jabez and that prayer he prayed, God, enlarge my territory. Help me to be more effective. Help me to be better. Help me to do better. So ambition by itself is a good thing. So ask yourself, what are you ambitious for today? What do you care about? What are your goals in life? What have you set as your goals in life for the next five years or for the next six months? Because I believe that no matter what you're, where you're at in life, God still, if he has you here on this earth, can use you to do, to do great things. Did you know sometimes we can say just a word or a sentence into somebody's life and it completely can change the trajectory of their life? And it might not even be thing, anything you remembered. There's a story that was told about a, a man who was mourning his father's death. And he was going back through his life. And he was thinking about all the things that he'd done with his dad. And he remembered one specific day where his dad said, you know what, we're just going to go fishing today. And he got up with his son early and they went fishing they caught some fish, they had a great time together, and they came back. And that, that man looked back in his life, and out of all the days he'd had with his dad, he remembered that day as being something really significant. He was going through his dad's journal after his dad passed away, and he was looking through his journal at the different pages of his journal, and he came to that one day where he remembered back that it was very close to the day where his dad and him had gone fishing together. And in the journal, his dad had written... Went fishing with my son all day, a day wasted. From his dad's perspective, he just wasted a day. But from his son's perspective, it was the best day he'd ever had. So even if you think that it was a day wasted, even if sometimes you look at your life and you say, man, boy, I really, let me just tell you something. When you're pouring your life into other people, when you're doing your best for the people around you, it makes a difference. And that person could look back at that one day and say, that was the day that was the best day I ever had with my dad. You don't know the effects that your words and your life have on the people around you. So be ambitious. Be ambitious for what God can do through you. Just don't be selfishly ambitious. Don't make it about you. Don't make it about what you're going to achieve or what you're going to get or what people are going to say about you and who you are. Do it in such a way where you're not just being selfish, but you're giving to others. And the next part of this is, it doesn't say it this way in the scripture, but I want to start it this way. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Do nothing out of vain conceit. In the scripture it says, or vain conceit. But I want to separate those two. Because selfish ambition is the beginning of vain conceit. When we are selfishly ambitious and we accomplish something, we think we're the only one who should get the credit. No, no, this is what I did. This is what I accomplished. This is what I created. This is what I made. This is how I succeeded. And if you live into your selfish ambition... It will become vain conceit. In the old English, it says vain glory. In other words, it's all about you getting the glory. It's all about you getting the credit. But when you're, when you're ambitious for being the person that God wants you to be, when you get to that place where you can step back and you can say, wow, this is really amazing what God has done. That vain conceit becomes thankful praise. Thankful praise instead of, it's all about me. It's all about thanking God for what he's done through you. How that has made a difference in your life and in the lives of people around you. And then the next part of this goes into these principles of what you need to do in order to accomplish those things in your life that God has called you to accomplish. If you want to optimize your life, you got to get rid of selfish ambition turn vain conceit into thankful praise. And then this one is kind of 
It's kind of troubling a little bit. Because this part of it says, in humility, value others above yourself. Now, humility is more than just a noun. It is a value-added action word. Humility is every day, every action, adding value to the people around you. Helping other people around you become their best. Humility is not just about who you are. It's about who we are. And making sure that as you live your life, you're adding value to the people around you. And, and the most successful people in the world are the people who help other people in their lives, who add value to other people's lives. And I don't care what you do. Do it as unto the Lord and do it in such a way that you're serving and giving out of that heart of thankful praise, out of that heart of giving credit to God for what he's doing in your life and how he's working in your life and how he's changing your life. That this verse doesn't mean to walk around saying, oh, I'm just so terrible, I can't accomplish anything, but everybody else is wonderful. <laughs> it's not saying degrade yourself or think of yourself as nothing. It's learning the blessing that comes when we help each other, when we encourage each other, when we're there for each other. And in humility, what you're showing to the people around you is God's love. The love that only comes from Him. Humility is saying, God, because I'm serving you with my whole heart, give me the privilege now to serve others. Give me the privilege to help other people along life's path. And that's what this final part of this says. It says to us that each of you should be looking not just to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Your best days, the best days you'll ever have, are the direct result of the people around you having their best days. <laughs> and there's, there's some questions I want you to ask yourself. There's four questions that come from these four principles. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Do nothing out of vain conceit. Live in humility before others and look at the interest of others before yourself. Here's the four questions. What do I want my life to accomplish from this point on? From today, what do I want my life to accomplish? Be ambitious and write that down. Make a plan for how you want your life to be lived out from this point on. What am I doing to make a difference in the world that I live in? How am I changing and transforming the world around me. What is my motivation for what I do for others? That is, that is the key to all of this. What you're motivated by. Why you do the things you do. And then finally, how do I intentionally try to show love to others? How you answer those four questions defines how you live out this verse. Because the next part of this chapter says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. See, this is a way for you to optimize who you are by following the example that Jesus gave us. And by living into that example and becoming the person that God has called you to be, you can optimize your life. You can be more for Jesus. If you don't think seriously about these questions, if you don't have an answer to these questions, if you haven't prayed about these questions and thought about this deeply, You'll just be kind of coasting along through life. What do you want to accomplish with your life? How do you want to live that out? What's that going to, what's that going to look like? 
Who are you going to be five years from now? Who are you going to be six months from now? Depends on how you live out these questions and answer these questions. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, and you online, you don't have to raise your hand either, but how many of you have a five-year plan? Okay, how many of you have a six-month plan? Don't raise your hands. Just, Or are you just kind of coasting through life? Now, I'm not saying if you don't have a five-year plan written down, you're coasting through life. Don't hear me saying that. What I'm saying is, have you deeply thought about what it means to be the best person you can be at this point in your life? Whether you write it down or not, it still needs to be something you're thinking about and you're praying about and you're processing and you're going through these, these ideas of, of what it means to be the person that God's called you to be. What does that look like in your life? You say, well, Pastor Matt, I, I'm getting up in my ears. I don't know how much more I got here. <laughs> One of my favorite moments in baseball was when the Dodgers were playing and it came down to the last out. It was the ninth inning and the manager of the Dodgers put in an old grizzled veteran who wasn't even supposed to play. This guy was towards the end of his career and uh, his knees had been bothering him. He could hardly walk. His hips were bothering him. He could hardly play at all. But he knew how to swing the bat. So Steve Garvey gets up to bat. Kirk Gibson. Why did I say Steve? Oh, I know why I said Steve Garvey, because he's running for uh, governor of California, yeah. Kirk Gibson gets up to bat. And, and, you know, it doesn't just take one pitch. He gets up, and he's looking down, you know, he's got that real specific stance. And Dennis Exer Eckersley is doing the pitching. And Dennis Eckersley has the weirdest pitch in all of baseball. He gets down like this, and he kind of throws it sideways like this. One of the best pitchers of that time. Now, you got to set the scene here. This guy's not even supposed to be batting. He's not even supposed to be in the game. He's old. He's worn out. One time, he, he, he pops the pop fly, and he thinks he might have to run, and so he starts running to the first base, and he can barely run. I mean, you just watch the, watch the thing. It's like... How is this guy going to actually hit the ball and get the first base, even if he does hit the ball? I mean, it came down to full count. I mean, the whole thing, ninth inning, full, the whole thing. And one pitch and one ball, and he hit a home run over the fence. And as he hit that home run, something changed. He dropped that bat, and those old knees didn't hurt as much anymore. All of a sudden, he was just going like this around the second base, giving that fist pump. Comes around, and his whole team is welcoming him in as they win the game. From a man who was worn out, wasn't supposed to play, and his manager took a chance on him because he knew how to swing the bat. Let me just tell you something. God is going to use every gift and everything he's given you, no matter how old you are, no matter how you feel, no matter what you may be going through, I want to encourage you this morning, God can help you to do your optimal with what you have to give. Because Kirk Gibson did not have everything he was able or capable of to give. And I just want you to know... <laughs> You say, Lord, I've only got 60% to give to you because there's no way I'm getting to 100%. You know, we were talking about that a couple weeks ago, giving 100% to Jesus. Let me just tell you something. You give everything you've got to give. It may not be 100%, but whatever it is, he'll take it and he'll optimize it. 
He'll take those errors and he'll take those inefficiencies and he'll take all those broken body parts and worn out knees and whatever it else is that you got going on and he will change you and transform you and help you to live an optimal life. And not just physically. You see, we're not just talking about a physical thing here. We're talking about a spiritual and a mental and an emotional thing. Your knees might be great. Your knees might not be worn out at all. But your spiritual heart might be broken. Your spiritual mind might be shattered. Your sense of who you are and what that's supposed to be might be broken. As a matter of fact, your self-image of who you are might be so bad, you don't even think you're valuable enough to be loved or valuable enough to be loved by God or that Jesus would die on the cross for your sin, that you are that valuable, that you're that important. You might, you might think, I'm not doing anything out of selfish ambition. I'm, doing, I'm not ambitious at all. Because I don't think I'm worth much. I don't think I can accomplish much. I don't think I can do much. Let me just tell you something. The best thing for your self-image as a young person, the best thing for your self-image as an older person, is for you to follow Jesus with your whole heart. And do nothing out of selfishness or conceit but in humility live your life in such a way where you can have the mind that Jesus had of serving others, of loving others, of giving himself so that we could see what that could look like. That's how to live an optimal life. That's what it means to understand how you can live into your best life. Now I know you say, Pastor Matt, you're starting to sound like a motivational speaker. <laughs> You're starting to sound like, if you'll just try hard enough, you can do better. Let me just tell you something. In the spiritual world, when you get up to bat, you're not alone. Amen. See, Kirk Gibson was dependent on all his skills and abilities of a lifetime of learning how to hit, of learning how to watch a pitcher's ball come into the, pitcher's, uh, the, the batter's box there. But ultimately, he was there on his own gifts and abilities. When you're serving God and you're doing the things that God wants you to do, you're not there under your own strength and under your own power. You're there with the hosts of heaven standing with you. You're there with the angels of God surrounding you. You're there with the Holy Spirit watching over you. You're there with Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. You're there with Him. And He is the one that can transform you. He is the one that can change you. He's the one that can help you. When you've given him everything you've got, he can take it from there. Because you're not going to be optimal without the first programmer that ever existed. <laughs> you're not going to be able to get the inefficiencies out of your system unless you serve the one and live for the one who built the system in the first place. <laughs> and when you live into that, and when you live for that, he begins to transform you and change you. He begins to remove those blocks of negative code out of your mind. He begins to take those broken uh, wires in there and he begins to solder those back together. and He begins to change you and transform you and help you to think differently, to live differently, and to love differently. And when you do that, and when you live into that, then you can truly understand how to live out these verses. And so I pray with you that these four questions will be questions that you will take to heart and you will begin to try to answer and you will begin to live into. What do I want my life to accomplish from this point on? What am I doing to make a difference in the world that I live in? What is my motivation for what I do for others? And how do I intentionally try to show love to others? As you answer those questions, I pray with you that God will help you to answer those questions in light of who Jesus is and the mind of Christ that he gave us an example of. That you'll put aside all the other things that you come against. And you'll say, wait a second. Here's what God is helping me to accomplish. I'm not doing this by myself. Here's what God is helping me to do to make a difference for the world that I live in. Here's what God is helping me do to understand what other people are going through and try to understand where they're coming from and live into what's best for them 
And then here's what I'm doing, God, this week to intentionally show love to other people. As we do that, God transforms us and optimizes us and helps us to be more for Jesus. Would you stand together with me as we close our service today? Jesus, Jesus, you're the answer to all I'm searching for. Heavenly Father, we're here in your presence. We know that right now you're standing at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us and you see each person here in this sanctuary this morning. You see everything we're going through. <laughs> you know all about it. And you love us anyway. Lord, we're so glad that the one who knows us the best loves us the most. So we just thank you for the privilege it is to be in your presence today. Search our hearts. Try us. See if there be any wicked way in us. Lead us in the way everlasting for you alone are our strength and our redeemer. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that for every person standing here, for every person watching online, for every person here at this altar, that you would help us to have a desire to be more for you in everything we do. That we begin to ask ourselves some really tough questions about who we are, where we are, where we're going, and how we're depending on you to help us get there. So Lord, we ask for your strength and your wisdom to be over each one of us as we live into this week. God, help us to have some ambition to do the things you've called us to do. Open up our hearts in humility to serve others so that we can love you and love each other. And Lord, whatever inefficiencies or short, shorts or whatever there might be in our system that aren't working the way they need to, Lord, <laughs> We're dependent on you to optimize our lives. We cannot do it by ourselves. So be with us. Watch over us. Help us to live in with confidence towards the person that you're calling us to be. Help us to be humble before you. And Lord, I pray as we're here today that you would bring peace to Jerusalem and all the things going on around the world in the Ukraine and all over the world, God. Help us as a church to rise up as never before and live to be the people of God you've called us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday.